Hello my viewers and welcome back to my channel. I will come into a powerful and thought-provoking video now. In this video, a Ukrainian immigrant talks about crucial topics of artism, revisionist history, and G-side. Now, the speaker shares her personal perspective on the dangers of Holocaust denial and the importance of listening to black women. She sheds light on the often overlooked Holodomor, a devastating G-side that claimed millions of lives and draws striking parallels with the transatlantic slave trade and the ongoing struggles of black people in America. With a unique blend of personal experience, historical context, and statistical analysis, the speaker reveals the shocking truth about the deliberate erasure of traumatic events from history textbooks. Now, she exposes the sinister forces behind these omissions and their connection to the perpetration of artism and oppression. So get ready to have your eyes open to the harsh realities of our world and age and need for genuine education, empathy, and action. In this video, we'll explore the intersection of historical trauma, systemic artism and the power of knowledge in shaping our understanding of the world and ourselves take a look at her video i will be right back i just have one thing to say about this holocaust discourse and that's that y'all will literally do anything but listen to black women and because of that all of us live in hell and as someone who immigrated from ukraine and switched over to an american curriculum halfway through my schooling let me just tell you why this is so dangerous what you guys are doing this holocaust defenderism is so disingenuous and for y'all not to realize that it is propaganda in some way shape or form is again why we all live in hell so let's talk about what it is that maddie was actually trying to say and let me back it up with some like figures and statistics for you just to put it in perspective okay and as somebody growing up in ukraine it should have been kind of weird to me when we were learning so much more about the holocaust that result in the death of six million Jews and we were learning about the whole of the more which again resulted in about 3.9 million deaths at the very least there are some statistics that say 10 million people which is very comparable to the Holocaust okay so now mind you that both the Holocaust and the whole of the more lasted around 10 to 15 years look at these numbers right here 246 years 400 years 12.5 million people Another critical thing that people miss when we talk about these numbers is these were just the people that were initially brought over. So like not including all of their descendants, these people were not killed off systematically. They were worse, systematically kept alive to not only labor for a country that they didn't come from, uh, a country where they were brought in voluntarily. Obviously they were laboring without pay or being abused while they were laboring. And not only that, but like it predates the two world wars that we had. This was a deep, systematic and multi-generational crime against humanity that actually probably led and paved the way for the type of propaganda and treatment that Jewish people were subjected to. Okay, so this is what I learned in Ukraine, all right? And yes, we were definitely taught about the Holocaust. It's like the only thing that I really learned about as far as the atrocities that have happened in my own country which the Holocaust was preceded by a huge atrocity that happened in my country that my grandmother lived through. And I wasn't taught about it in my Ukrainian school as much as we were taught about the Holocaust. The pieces of information that I was given about the Holocaust, like those were the ones that I walked away with and like remembered. And yes, we learned about every horrific thing that happened. We learned about Ukraine's involvement in it. We, we learned about all the torture. All the atrocities were covered. Now, you guys have to understand that history textbooks don't just come out of nowhere. Like, people put them together the way that they're put together for a reason. And let me show you guys this too. This is talking about Holodomor in Ukraine. The important thing for y'all to know is that in Soviet Ukraine, the Holodomor was kept out of official public discourse until shortly before Ukraine won its independence in 1991. We now know that explicit instructions were issued throughout the Soviet Union banning the use of the word famine, not only in party and military documents, but also in medical records and statistical accounts. So even my own, the people that lived in my country that were putting together textbooks for me, for me to learn about what has been happening in my country for the past, you know, hundreds of years, they were not yet to a point where they were allowed to address this trauma openly for more than 50 years. The Soviet regime prevented families and individuals from processing both personal and national grief. That's to bring it back to why I was taught so much about the Holocaust and so little about the Holodomor. As a Ukrainian who lived in Ukraine, who was born in the year that Ukraine gained its independence, I was taught nothing about this because it wasn't in the public memory, because it wasn't allowed in the public discourse, because evidence of it was destroyed systematically. Okay, now this brings me to America. 
where mind you i spent like the latter half of my education so everything that i learned in ukraine about the holocaust i learned from grades one through five and they spared no detail they spared no gruesome horrific detail of what happened during the holocaust as far as the holodomor we saw maybe like a couple pictures of like really skinny people that were like starving to death when i tell you that i came to america and like literally based on my education i thought that slavery was literally not a big deal because of the way that it's taught here in america you guys need to understand that yes the education system as maddie said has a being agenda the way that slavery was covered in my history books and my history classes specifically is very especially atrocious coming from a country where i was so well educated on other war and country crimes it was especially misleading because basically the way that slavery was presented in my american history classes and my american textbooks was the settlers brought some people over from africa to help build the great country of america and then they realized that this was actually slavery and then slavery was abolished everybody was happy and everybody lived happily ever after and we are a country with equal rights now that is basically tell me i'm fucking lying tell me i'm lying that's basically how slavery is covered in american history courses and textbooks slavery is very much portrayed as like uh, a thing that america had no control over and like once they realized it was happening on their land everybody was horrified and they stopped it right away and it never happened again like that's literally how it's presented and this is what the original creator was trying to say and after i learned the truth about slavery which i will tag a couple videos here that just scratched the surface a little bit of what happened during the period of time when people were enslaved in america and i realized the discrepancy between the truth and what is being taught in schools the american problem of racism made perfect sense to me and it like stuck out to me like a sore thumb like i just couldn't unsee it it made sense to me why people were so upset and being like oh they're just trying to white guilt us and this is reverse racism and this is why like critical race theory is so evil and this isn't unity this is divisive talking about racism and slavery is divisive like it made perfect sense because unless you actually go out and educate yourself to the atrocities that happened on this land where you exist you won't know like you won't know you won't know you won't learn it in school your parents won't tell you nobody's going to tell you these things other than the people that it happened to but you won't listen because you don't think it was a baking deal and the more egregious and like nonsensical part of this whole thing to me is that people seem to take the holocaust more seriously because it seemed so like senseless and so arbitrary and like yes people were assigned like evil characteristics just to make the killing off of them okay and that is terrible please do not hear me saying that that is not terrible it's, but for some reason we generations of slavery and abuse and gaslighting and brainwashing and like absolute mental and physical annihilation to the slaves was a multi-generational 400 year long period of extreme 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 abuse and maligning of black people by white people but because it produced capital we're not that upset about it in fact in fact we still resort to this very tactic to produce capital if you've ever heard of prison labor it's essentially slave labor prisons are meant to be a place to rehabilitate people and instead they are working for pennies an hour making license plates and things like that and hand sanitizer because our government wants to spend its money on war rather than paying like citizens to produce and labor for money and actually rehabilitating the prisoners so slavery literally still exists in this country because it's not being talked about i'm going to show you guys this one more time loss of collective memory kept out of official public discourse now again there's something happened here that allowed it to be part of the discourse ukraine won its independence in 1991 you need to know that as an american you're still here you're still in the loss of collective memory kept out of official public discourse stage the true independence has not happened yet in america America is not independent. It's not independent of murder, of slave labor, and theft from its own citizens to fund wars. America is not free. America is not an independent country. But these are the patterns that Maddie was trying to tell you guys about. That you are learning about history in a linear, individualistic way. You're not learning about these things as a pattern. You're not learning that certain things precede precede these crimes against humanity every time and then if y'all actually knew the pattern then we would actually have a chance of becoming an independent country and that if y'all actually knew the pattern then this western individualistic don't punish me for the sins of my ancestors type shit would have never even been accepted here instead there's this focus on this one horrific event and i'm not saying it wasn't politically motivated but but the other two things that i mentioned in this video the 
Holodomor and slavery. There was definitely a political motivation both times to keep these things out of the discourse, out of the public discourse. It was not the case with the Holocaust. That's why it's so easy for so many people to see the Holocaust as like this horrible thing, like this once in a lifetime event. It's not a once in a lifetime event. Ukraine's going through it right now. Israel's doing it to Gaza, to Palestine right now. The people that had the Holocaust happen to them have turned around and systematically eradicated, wiped clean almost an entire population, destroyed all of its history, all of its monuments, all of its churches, all of its buildings, its hospitals, killed children, killed mothers, killed everybody. And they lied to everybody about why they did it. And their children are not going to learn about this in history books. What would be the political motivation for that? And we will keep repeating these genocidal cycles over and over and over and over again until we start talking about what's the motivation? What are the patterns leading up to these things? And how do we eradicate that? The reason we don't talk about that is because that would destroy capitalism and the Western world, all of the shit that makes rich people richer. That's why we don't talk about it. So I hope that helps. Please listen to black women. Just listen. It'll just save you so much time in the long run. Just listen. Now, the lady in the video makes several poignant points about the dangers of revisionist history and the importance of acknowledging the trauma inflicted upon marginalized communities. She rightly highlights the parallel between the Holodomor and the transatlantic slave trade, two devastating events that have been largely overlooked or downplayed in historical accounts. Now, one crucial point she makes is that the erasure of traumatic events from history textbooks is a deliberate attempt to shape people's understanding of the past and perpetuate systemic artism. Now, this is a critical observation, as the omission of such events from educational curricula only serves to perpetuate ignorance and perpetuate harmful stereotypes. Her emphasis on the importance of education and empathy in addressing these issues is vital. By engaging with experiences of marginalized communities and acknowledging the historical trauma inflicted upon marginalized communities, palm color people can begin to build a more just and equitable society. It's worth nothing that the legacy of colonialism and slavery continues to impact marginalized communities today. The systemic artism and oppression that have been perpetrated against these communities have resulted in significant disparities in education, housing, healthcare, and criminal justice outcomes. Her point about the danger of Holocaust denial is particularly relevant in today's political climate. The rise of palm color nationalism and anti-Semitism in recent years is a stark reminder of the importance of acknowledging the learning from historical traumas. Now, her observation about the American education system's treatment of slavery is a crucial one. It is true that slavery is often downplayed or glossed over in educational curricula, perpetuating a harmful narrative that minimizes the brutality and inhumanity of this dark period in history. By framing slavery as a mere bump in the road or a mistake of the past, the education system perpetuates a false narrative that obscures the true horrors of slavery and its ongoing impact on marginalized communities. Now, this watered-down approach to teaching slavery ignores the systemic artism, violence, and humanization that were integral to the institution of slavery. Moreover, this approach reinforces harmful stereotypes and perpetuates historical amnesia, allowing future generations to remain ignorant of the true nature of slavery and its ongoing legacy. It's no wonder that many Americans today still struggle to acknowledge the ongoing impacts of slavery and systemic artism in our society. The latest commentary highlights the urgent need for a more honest and nuanced approach to teaching slavery and American history. There is need to demand that the educational institutions prioritize truth-telling and accuracy, acknowledging the brutal realities of slavery and its ongoing impacts on marginalized communities. Now, the erasure and alteration of marginalized communities' history in American history is a systemic issue rooted in power dynamics, privilege, and oppression. Those in positions of power often from dominant groups groups have historically controlled the narrative and manipulated the retelling of events to maintain their privilege and justifying ongoing oppression. Now, one reason for this distortion is the desire to avoid discomfort and guilt associated with acknowledging the brutal treatment of marginalized groups. By downplaying or omitting the horrors inflicted upon these communities, the dominant group can escape accountability and maintain a sanitized vision of history. Now, another factor is the perpetration of harmful stereotypes and basses. By altering or erasing marginalized communities' experiences, the dominant group can reinforce negative attitudes and justify discriminatory practices. The dominant group's vision of history often prioritizes their own achievements and contributions, marginalizing or ignoring those of marginalized communities. Now, this perpetuates a false narrative of superiority and reinforces harmful power dynamics. 
The altering of Magdalene's community's history is often used to maintain control and suppress resistance. By erasing or distorting the history of marginalized groups, those in power can prevent these communities from learning from their past, building on their strengths and mobilizing for justice. The changing of marginalized communities' history in American history is a deliberate attempt to maintain power and privilege. It's a sad reality that the education system and societal structures often fail to provide accurate and comprehensive information about the experiences of marginalized communities. Schools and palm color parents often perpetuate a sanitized version of history, omitting the brutal truths and contributions of marginalized groups. Now, this lack of representation and erasure of experiences perpetuates harmful stereotypes and reinforces systemic oppression. That's why it's important to seek out knowledge and listen to the voices of marginalized communities. By doing so, they can gain a more nuanced understanding of history and the ongoing struggles of these communities. Education is key to dismantling systemic op oppression, and it's not just about formal education. People need to be willing to listen, learn, and amplify the voices of marginalized groups. They need to seek out diverse perspectives and experiences and be open to having their minds expanded and their assumptions challenged. We have finally come to the end of the video, but what do my viewers have to say? Share your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video as I bring you another interesting video.